Hello and welcome to all Football Extremers. Welcome to another installment of Football Extreme. This is the Extreme Team. Myself, Kobena, DJ Bongs, and Tarani Fonene. Welcome, boys. Say hello to the world. Hello, Football hello. Extremers. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Yeah, welcome, uh, football extremists. And uh, yeah, let's talk about Liverpool, man. Let's talk about <laughs> Liverpool. Gents. Oh my gosh, that, that team. As you can see, guys, I'm sitting on my couch because today, yes. this episode, because Liverpool are busy playing like couch potatoes. So I thought, hey, let me just play along. Listen to, we went from going almost four years unbeaten at Anfield to now losing four games in a row at home. Never mind the other games in between. Because I Liverpool, the, it's, Liverpool is now like the Cinderella story where her chariot changed into a pumpkin at the strike of midnight. <laughs> That's Liverpool now. You were Cinderella at the ball for the last two years, winning all the trophies imaginable. And now, boom, clock struck 12, the carriage turned to a carrot and I've lost my glass slipper and all my defenders are gone. Virgil van Dijk. Virgil van Dijk was the, was the, was the, what's this thing? Was the carriage. And then boom, they broke his leg. <laughs> That's it. That's, thank you. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for coming. Liverpool back down the tops, put to the bottom of the top six you go. So, Nje, no. Liverpool, um, these guys, they need to just refresh, restart. We are back to being who we used to be pre club We must accept it. And the only way forward now is to wait for Virgil and Gomez to come back. And Henderson, let's see what happens with Henderson, because I think he's going to be out for a while again. Because that injury on Saturday, wow, that looks serious. So, yeah. Liverpool, yeah. just reset. club. first of all, Majid, <laughs> club yeah. to realise Oguti, Thiago is not good enough for the first team. Oh, not good enough for the first 11. First team, fine, he can be on the bench. That dude is late for tackles, and I don't know how many goals have come from free kicks that came from a late Thiago tackle. I think that's three. Internet, do your thing. Go look it up this season. Internet, do it, guys. Go look up those videos. Everton, the Everton game, 2-2, the first one. The tackle from Thiago cost us a goal. Then Southampton, 1-0 defeat. Thiago, late tackle. Then you give James Ward prowse Obviously, James Ward prowse is almost the king of the free kicks this season. He just puts it in there. Boom, Danny Ings, score against your old club. Thank you. Thanks for coming, Liverpool. Three points down the drain. And then let's not even talk about the fact that these dudes are dropping points against the relegation team. Sonje, yeah. I, Liverpool, stop making com- uh, um, excuses and saying, hey, hey, injuries. Injuries are a part of the game. Injuries happen and fine. This season is extra crazy because every centre-back is gone. Fine. But you brought two centre-backs. Put your midfielders back in their positions put the centre-backs in there, the title is gone. I was hoping that this dude was going to be like, okay, the title's gone. Let me put these defenders, these new kids in the defensive places. Let me put Jordan Henderson back in the midfield. Take out Thiago, put him in the bench, because that's what he actually did for the previous game. Which game was... um, The previous game, he put Thiago on the bench and then James Milner gets injured in 30 minutes. So, this team has just been characterized by injuries and just the whole team being displaced. The same thing that happened to City last season. So, Ned, you were saying some things about Liverpool's performance over the last two years. Um, Yeah, man. Uh, Liverpool is a victim of their own success. Um, They set the standard uh, and now they're struggling to live up to their own standard. Um, so look for me, Klopp, it's the rotation. Um, that's all I, that's that's the only thing I can say. He doesn't rotate players, 
And that's why when players are out um, and the players that do come in, they, they're not good enough um, because they've always been um, uh, bench, bench warmers, as you put it. So if we can get to a point where he does rotate players uh, a bit more, he'll be able to know, you know, how bad or how good his backup players are, you know. So if you look at uh, Man United, they're always rotating. Sometimes you don't see Paul Pogba in the squad at all, <laughs> not even on the bench, yeah. you know. And that just shows that, look, at some point, we're expecting to see Mo Salah, Firmino, um, and, um, and Mane nowhere near the first team, man. Just let the other dudes play. If it's just another random game, you know, let them play. But this guy, he seems so attached um, to the players, um, even Van Dijk, that yeah. the moment the, those guys start losing form or the guys getting injured, it's like he doesn't have another plan, you know. And Liverpool is not just 11 players. You know, it's 11 players plus another 11, um, you know, that that could potentially uh, step in if there's a disaster, you know. And because he's never given those guys a chance, I mean, Origi is always the understudy of the front three. And he only plays when the, when the front three is tired or he only plays if one of the front three is injured. Now, if none of that happens, Origi will never play. That's, that doesn't give the guy confidence, you know. Then all of a sudden, when Mane is, is losing form and Klopp doesn't have the courage to say, hey, Mane, I'm going to bench you, Origi, you know, get in there. Because Origi is going to be like, how? Now you're calling on me because you're desperate, you know. He's not going to grab the opportunity because he knows he'll grab the opportunity. He'll score two, three goals. When Mane comes back, he's going to go back to the bench and Mane is going to come back in the team. Yeah. So it's almost like there's players who are off limits, who are never going to be benched, who are never going to be substituted. <laughs> and, that's the, and that's the club style. You can't have that, man. These guys are tired. I mean, Salah yeah. is tired. Firmino is tired. Right. Bench these guys, put, put a new front three there and let the guys some new combinations, some new formations. And then let's see a different side to Liverpool. Otherwise, the front three there, they're predictable. Um, and now they've become beatable. So, yeah. DJ, what do you think? Yeah, Mr. Off Limits, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Liverpool. Uh, well, it seems to repeat itself, really, because with Klopp at the helm, even at Dortmund, he went to a similar situation as now. He won the league title back to back. In his third season, he reached the Champions League final, and thereafter, things just started going down, downwards for him. And he was using the same players over and over, just like in Liverpool. But the difference is, is that now in the Premier League, there's not just one team like in Germany. There are many teams that are going for top spots. And as Nene said, Klopp has been using the same players over and over again. And he rarely used the players on the bench. I mean, beginning of the season, Adam Lalana left. And that was another guy uh, who he relied on a lot in previous seasons. And he, was, he brought in Thiago hoping that, well, Thiago is coming from Bayern. These guys just want to travel, it's going to have a similar impact. But this is a Premier League. Maybe it's too fast for him to come at his age to the Premier League. As you know, some superstars come into the Premier League and it's hard for them to adapt. And Virgil van Dijk, uh, where do I start? He was great for them, but they never had a backup plan in case but. When Dyke gets injured, and then what happened? Him and Gomez both got injured at the same time, and everything just went down spiral. Matip will come in every now and again, but he's also not match fit. So, yeah, many problems for Liverpool. And you're not sure when the guys come back after such a lengthy layoff in 
what condition is he going to be the same player as he was or is he still going to be a bit fragile and oppositions are just going to target him and say there's a weak link. I mean, he's not the same player he once was. We can go to that guy. And mm. the front three, uh, as you said, Origi only play if someone is injured. Mane has been on a bad run since I don't know when, but yeah, he doesn't season, yeah. yeah, Mane Mane has been on holiday this season. I said it even in game yeah. one, in the first game of the season when we opened the the game, the season with Leeds. Mane was on holiday. The only person who was yeah. playing in that game was Salah, and Firmino was trying. But Liverpool's problems started before. Virgil van Dijk's injury. Liverpool's problem started when the season restarted last season. When it was time to finish off and win the league, we noticed it from day one. Actually, Liverpool's problem started when Watford beat us. Well, it was a 3-0 or something yeah. when they ended our unbeaten run. That's where the problem started because that was two games before the end of... Uh, before Corona stopped the league. And when Project Restart happened, Liverpool was not the same team. When Project Restart happened, Liverpool was disjointed, slow, not as quick and easy as they were before Project Restart. And then when this season started, these dudes looked like they were still on holiday. Mane still hasn't returned. Mane of last season has never come back. It's only Salah. They lost their mojo. Yeah. Lost their mojo and mm. you have Shakiri, who's a winner. And now you're playing him in midfield. I mean, yeah. I don't get that with Klopp. Yeah. It's, yeah. Good, yeah. Diego Schultz are fine. You signed the guy, but he got injured. So, Klopp as well, he has to take share some of the responsibilities because he's the one who picks the team and he's the one who signs, who decides uh, who I'm playing today and which position I'm playing him in. So, yeah. He has to also share some responsibility for that. You cannot just hide in the fact that so and so is injured. Some teams have many players injured. I mean, look at Aguero and De Bruyne only came back this past weekend at City. Yeah. But you did not hear Pep say, oh, no, we don't have this player. No, he he made changes to his team and they worked out for him very well. Yeah. Uh, but let's not forget, yeah. last season City had the exact same thing what Liverpool's going through now. Your centre back, your best centre back, who's actually the core of your play, your team, is out, and then you don't have guys good enough to replace long term in that position. Then you reshuffle your team, and reshuffling your team has broken the balance. So my whole problem with everything, fine, injuries are part of the game, fine, Klopp has to adjust. And that's time. But reshuffling the team, putting a midfielder in defence. When we were in school playing soccer, a defender's a defender. A midfielder's a defender. <laughs> if the defender's not good enough, that's you put him in there until he becomes good enough. When we were playing high school no, soccer, no. you don't just put your centre midfielder who sprays the ball and makes assists in the centre-back because the third the third centre-back on the bench is someone who's not good enough. You stick him in there and then you pray. That's what must happen. Look, now we've bought two new young defenders. Put them in there, put Jordan Henderson back and Fabinho back in the midfield and watch the balls land at Salah's feet when he's in front of the keeper. Because Thiago holds on to the ball for too long and then he gets there late in tackles and then we lose free kicks outside the box. Yes, that was the other one. He he tackled the guy the same game that Milner got injured. I can't remember. Burnley. It was Burnley two weeks ago where James Milner gets injured and then Thiago has to come in and, fight, and lo and behold, five minutes later, Thiago tackles the guy two meters outside the box. Next thing, goal. So, thank you very much, Thiago. You're not good enough in the starting lineup. Jordan Henderson <laughs> must come back into the field. Fabinho in fit must come back into midfield. Curtis Jones can join them because Ronaldo looks like he's no longer interested in wearing a red jersey. He looks like he's done. Where's Naby Keita? He's injured. Injured. Where's Naby Keita? 
Gone. Yeah. James Milner, Rabbi Keita, Oxley Chim- oh, Chimlin's back. But Chimlin's been out all season also. In and out of the operating table all season. Um, who else? All the center backs injured. And Jota. Go- Jota. Jota Go- came in. Make- Repeat. Yeah, yeah, I was okay. saying that club needs to make some big decisions come end of the season because you saw what Pep done. He bought two new center backs. The other center back can't get into the team because his old center back is now back to his old form. So some major decisions need to be made for not only the future of Liverpool but club's future as well because uh, I'm not worried. About does it. not. Yeah. I, get to the level of challenging for league titles, well, Liverpool is just going to find someone else who's going to do a better job. I, I also think um, yeah. left back and right back, there's no focus there because these guys are playing. But there's no backup left back and right back. So, and we've become accustomed to, to having... Uh, Robertsons and Trent. And if anything were to happen to one of them or both of them, then I think we'll also see more uh, cracks uh, in the Liverpool defence. Even if uh, Van Dijk were to come back uh, to the team, then who would replace the, 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 the two fullbacks? Because again, Klopp, he does not give the other players a, a chance in the team to prove whether they're good enough or not. He sticks with Andy Robertson. He sticks with Trent all the time. And at some point, he has to start rotating the wingbacks because um, it's... I mean, he's sucking them also. You know, we always talk about this thing of players being sucked <laughs> by. I mean, <laughs> how, much, how much more? These guys were on fire for the past three years, man. Assist like crazy. The best defenders in the league, you know, more assist than anyone else, scoring goals more than anyone else. And when they get tired, then what happens? Who's who's going to back them up, you know? So uh, no, that's also another problem area. Yeah. No, you have a, you raise a fair point, but you must remember at the beginning of the off-season, Liverpool bought a reserve left back with Simitas. And then the guy got injured as well. The dude's been injured all season. He only came back like a month ago. So Robertson's re- replacement was injured all season. And then Nathaniel Klein left Liverpool. Joe Gomez is a, is a, was a right back in the beginning of his career before he became a centre back. So Joe Gomez was there. Nico Williams is a reserve right back. But because of all these injuries at the centre-back, you're not going to put a kid now to replace a Trent when there are centre-backs that we don't trust already. So these dudes are victims of the fact that other dudes are injured. You can't afford to replace them. Because now that's the whole team to stable. Because if the centre-backs are injured, you're not going to just rotate the left-back and the right-back just because you want to put the other dudes in. Anyway, Robertson's replacement was out all season anyway. So... This season's injuries have just been too much. At the same time, I'm not going to make an excuse about the injuries because the front three were putting goals long before we were winning the league. And this season, they're just not doing it. This season, they have failed. So me, I say, as you guys said, Divock Origi wasn't given enough time. Look at, what's his name? Um, Minamino. He's been at Southampton for all of two weeks, three weeks. He's got two goals. He's got two goals in two games. The dudes left Liverpool for two weeks. But in the Liverpool jersey, he somehow couldn't cut it. Because Klopp was only giving him five minutes, ten minutes. You can't do anything in the Premier League ten minutes at the end of a game when Liverpool's won 2-0 already. He gave Jota time. He gave Jota 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Jota was scoring goals and then he started giving him... Big minutes, but you're giving him an amino five minutes. What can he do in five minutes? So Liverpool, yeah. they must just readjust and say the title's gone. Our best players are injured. Let's restart. Okay, 
We've got two young centre-backs. Let's get them cutting. Throw them in the deep end and stick with them. You've got no other choices here. There's no point in playing for Pino and centre-back when the title is gone. That's mm. what Pep lost. That's where Pep lost the title. He kept putting Fernandinho back there. Put John Stones or what's his name, Otamendi there and put Fernandinho back in the centre because that's where they were losing it. The centre, they were not so strong. Then the dudes get exposed at the back because the ball is now back there. Put your guys in the normal place in the midfield and then your defenders are not going to be so exposed. So my problem, Klopp ran out of ideas when the defenders got injured and the front three got stale, people figured them out. And obviously, after three years scoring in the goals, somewhere along the line, you're going to go dip. But Klopp doesn't have faith in Origi, doesn't have faith in Minamino. And now it's showing. Isn't it, isn't it time that Liverpool gets a recognised number nine striker? That's, that's a fair question. Just... Well, Origi is a number nine. But is Origi a 20 goal a season type of striker or is he going to chip in in that three games and then he'll go he'll probably shoot blanks for the next five? Anytime a guy can win you the Champions League he's a number nine. Anytime a guy can win you a derby he's a number nine. Anytime a guy can keep you in the championship hunt Uh, for the last game of the season he's a number nine. Divock Origi has done all three of those things in the same season. So, yeah. Divo Corrigi is a number nine. The whole then world. Why can't he, then, why can't he claim a starting lineup ahead of Roberto Firmino, who's not a natural number nine, if he is able to do that? Have you seen what it's Firmino does in that front line? It's the Have club. That's why. Yeah, it's the club. It's the club. Fine. It's the club. Whatever <laughs> Origi does, he's never going to get into the front three. I understand yeah. what you're saying about Firmino, what he does, yeah. and Salah, what he does, and Mane, what he does. To answer your question, DJ, Origi will never get to 20 goals in a season because he, he will never play more than 10 games in a season. Yeah. That's why I'm saying get a, a recognized number nine, play him because those front three are ah, tired. They're done, they're tired. done. They're tired. They're tired. They're tired. Salah, who's the only one who's doing something. The rest are just there making up numbers. As as you said, Mane has been on holiday since I don't know when. And injury to Diego Jota is not helping matters as well. That's, That's the other blow. Jota was getting these dudes out of prison. So many games. Four or five games in a row where Liverpool would have not won the game. And then Jota was like, nope, not on my watch. But then the dude got injured. There goes the get-out-of-jail-free card. Then the defensive problems, and then boom. Now you're sitting in sixth in the, in the league, defending champion. The, what? Right, 13 now. points? Is it 13 yeah, points yeah. or 19 <laughs> points oh. off the league? No, I think you're sitting... I don't know if it's sixth or seventh, eh? Yeah, it's sixth. It's sixth. Yeah, so now you've got Sheffield, you've got Chelsea, and you've got Fulham. Mm. What are your Mm. predictions? We're beating Chelsea. (laughs) (laughs) And Fulham. We're not beating Fulham. We can't beat relegation. And Sheffield. Ah, Sheffield will smash and grab. We're beating Chelsea, guys. Yeah. We're beating Chelsea, and then we'll draw against Sheffield. You say Here's that so confidently. Because uh, Chelsea. Chelsea's our daily bread. We're beating Chelsea. No matter how badly our players been, we still beat Spurs when everyone thought they were going to beat us when we were coming off a defeat. Chelsea, Spurs, um, Jay, those teams, Jay, Sasha. Here's the problem, <laughs> right? Before, before, we, before we, we, we let you go and, uh, you know, and cry behind closed doors. <laughs> if, if 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 Everton wins the game in hand, yeah. right, yeah. they got three points ahead of Liverpool. Yeah. You meaning you slip to seven. Yeah. And Everton goes sixth, right? Yeah. And if you selling telling me that you don't fancy your chances against Sheffield, okay, 
you run the risk of slipping even further. <laughs> and then Spurs, the team that you say you're not scared of, is going to catch up. And you're going to be slipping lower and lower. So you guys need to win three out of three to restore your dignity. I will see. Because, yeah. I don't think so we hopefully can. Everton, so hopefully Everton doesn't win. Because I think if Everton wins, then you're out of the top six. Yeah. I'm not even thinking about and that. It, I'm not thinking like that. Liverpool only so needs to look at the... Where is, Liverpool, where is Liverpool finishing the season? Anything outside of top two, I don't even look anymore. Because this is the best squad or second best squad in the league. But this season... They haven't lived up to the potential and half the squad has been injured. So outside top two, I stopped counting. But this season, as is right now, Liverpool will finish if I have to make a prediction. If you want me to predict, Liverpool yeah, will finish fourth. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool will finish I'm going to note it down. Yeah. When we're doing our show for the season finale, yeah. Remember these words: Liverpool will be sitting seven, <laughs> and uh, and uh, my 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 friend here believes we're going to be in the Champions League spots. <laughs> Liverpool will finish fourth because Leicester yeah. City will do what they always do, and they will choke. And don't even talk to me about West Ham. Declan Rice, <laughs> I will. <laughs> Yeah, man, there's uh, there's uh, Man United's uh, uh, unwanted there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Eat your heart up, Man United. Jesse Lingard is doing the things there. <laughs> nah, Jesse because Lingard. Name, yeah, I'm, listen, I'm that happy. guy must stay in West Ham, man. Probably. Yeah, he's not must stay there. Man United. Yeah. Just, that's just off the topic. But uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he should stay there. <laughs> <laughs> Where he is. We give them for free. They can have him for free. Yo. Yo. Right. Yeah, football extremists. That was our tirade on Liverpool's performance yeah. of late. Stay tuned for more from us uh, as we unpack what's been happening in Serie A, what Jesse Lingard's been doing, and all the <laughs> other things as well. So, yeah, football extremists, right. smash a like on our videos. Subscribe to our, our content and catch more Football Extreme coming soon. Gentlemen, parting words from you. Don't forget to comment on the videos, guys. Let us know what you think of our episodes. You know, it's a way of interacting with us. So don't be scared. I mean, we're waiting. We're waiting. On the, you're like, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Let's see what you guys have for us. So yeah. until next time, we're out. Definitely. Definitely. Say your final yeah. words, Nene. We see you there. Say your final words. Yeah, man. Hopefully, Liverpool bounces back uh, before uh, my friend here gets a heart attack. I'm still a red for life, boys. Yeah. No matter what I say. Still. Good luck, happy. man. Proudly red. Don't end up burning the shirts coming up. I ain't thing. burning the shirts. <laughs> Liverpool's the best team in England, just not performing like it. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, fans. Cheers, football fans. See you in our next installment of Football Extreme. <laughs>